7.4, area and arc length in polar coordinates. So to begin with, we have this theorem, the area of a region bounded by a polar curve. So suppose f is a continuous and non-negative function on the interval from alpha to beta, in terms of theta here, with zero less than beta minus alpha less than or equal to two pi. So the difference in our angles is, is less than two pi. The area of the region bounded by the graph r equals f of theta between the radial lines theta equals alpha and theta equals beta is given by this formula. Now we want to find the area of one petal of the rows defined by the equation r equals sine r equals three sine two theta. Now we actually looked at this same function in the last section and so I already know something about its symmetry. But if we didn't know that, we could observe that sine is cyclic, certainly. And it returns to its original position every pi over two based on that two theta. So the area we're actually trying to find, okay, if I had that function, which that function is a leaf, it has four leaves, it's a rose, and I want to find the area of this one leaf. Well, this leaf begins at theta equals zero and it ends at theta equals pi over two. So what I want to find according to that theorem is the area which is equal to the integral, or one half the integral from alpha to beta, so this is from zero to pi over two, of f of theta squared, or r squared, in this case it's defined in terms of r, so let's go ahead and just say r squared, which is going to be nine sine squared two theta, d theta. That will give me the area of that one petal of that rose. Now it turns out with polar coordinates, um, all of those trigonometric integrals we did previously, those come in very handy, those techniques we had. So those will likely come up again. All right, so we know that sine squared, we can rewrite that in a way. So I'm gonna go and factor the nine out. Nine halves, integral from zero to pi over two of sine squared, which we said previously was one half uh, minus cosine of twice our angle. Well, in this case, it's actually going to be four theta because we had two theta, and we have a one half there. All right, let's go ahead and actually factor that one half out as well. So this will be nine fourths integral from zero to pi over two of one minus cosine four theta d theta. All right, well, nine fourths this is going to be theta minus sine of four theta divided by four evaluated from zero to pi over two. All right, well, that will be sine of two pi so this will become nine halves or nine fourths times pi over two. And then evaluating that at zero, it is zero. So we get nine eighths pi or nine pi over eight. And that is the area of that one petal of that rose. Right, next, find the area outside the cardioid r equals two plus two sine theta, and inside the circle r equals six sine theta. All right, well, we've actually been specifically told which one is the outer function and which one is the inner function, so we don't have to worry about that, but we do need to know where these two intersect. So we'll set them equal to each other. All right, well, that would be four sine theta equals two, or sine theta equals one half, 
And there are two places where that is true. Sine of pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. All right, so those are our intervals. That is our interval. Those are our end points for our integral or integrand here. So from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. And we want to find the area of each. Now, let's go ahead and just do these two separately. So 1 half times the integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of our outer function and our versus our inner function. Well, our outer function is going to be 6 sine theta squared or 36 sine squared theta d theta. No equal sign there. We're going to say minus 1 half integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of our inner function. We want to be outside of that function. So squared 2 plus 2 sine theta squared d theta. All right, let's clean some things up slightly. I'm going to it's going to be a 36 for the first, like I said, and we'll multiply those together. So that is 18 integral pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, sine squared theta d theta. Now this, if I, I'm going to factor in my 1 half as I go. Okay, this is going to be a, that's going to be 4, 2 plus 2 sine theta. We're, we're distributing that. So it'll be 4, so this will be minus 2. All right, so minus 2. Then that would be a an 8 sine theta. So then we will divide that by 2, so minus 4 sine theta. Okay, and then we'll have a 4 sine squared, so this would be plus 2 sine squared theta. All right, and then that's going to be the interval, the integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Okay. So, we'll work these out separately, although I think we might actually be able to combine some things there. If we took that as the second one as three separate integrals, We'd have 18 sine theta minus 2 sine squared theta. So we actually might be able to combine those. I'm not going to worry with that, but I think we could do that. All right. Now, for the sine squared, we know that's going to be a 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta. So 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta. Integral 18, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Okay, there's our first. Minus, we'll go and factor a 2 out of that. And, and I'm going to replace what we just had there. All right, so 1 minus 2 sine theta plus... 1 half minus cosine 2 theta minus 1 half of that. And then we have our d theta. Okay. Now we have 18 times theta minus, and that will be a 1 half, alright, sine 2 theta, mm, that'd be 1 fourth, sine 2 theta, minus 2, and that'll be evaluated from, five pi, from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. 
And this last one, minus 2 times theta minus 2 or plus 2. Hold on. Cosine to sine, it would change the sine. So yes, that would be plus cosine theta plus 1 half theta, which we could combine those two. Minus 1 fourth sine 2 theta. Evaluated pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. And that should be 4 pi if I've done all of my math right there. You double check that. All right, next we have arc length of a curve defined by a polar function. And this is actually based off of the arc length from a parametric perspective that we saw previously. So there is our, I mean, there's the equation we're going to use. We're going to have effectively two functions, r, and dr d theta. So we're going to treat it like we have two parametric functions in a sort. All right, so the arc length of a cardioid, r equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta that we just saw. Well, first we want to say r is, well, that's sort of redundant. We have r, how about dr d theta? That is going to be 2, negative 2 sine theta. Now, to find our interval alpha to beta here, well, if we deal with the function r equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta, if we evaluate this at theta of 0, this is the point 0, 4. Now, I'm not going to do this here. I suggest you do this. If you, take a, if you make a table, make a table, you find that this starts to return back or it started at 2 pi, and that's really just because cosine is cyclic in that way. But if we looked at a table, we could see that it actually starts repeating itself at that point. So we have a starting point of 0 in terms of theta, and we have an ending point of 2 pi, which just makes sense when we look at a cardioid. If you look at that original graph that I showed you um, from the textbook, it is a, it's not a circle. But it has some of the same properties. So it just makes sense if we were bounded between 0 to 2 pi, that might be our, our ending and beginning points. So our length is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of r squared, 2 plus 2 cosine theta squared, plus dr d theta squared. So this would be negative 2 sine theta squared d theta. Okay, well if we multiply that first argument here out, that would be 4 plus 8 cosine theta plus 4 cosine squared theta. Multiplying the second out, that would be plus 4 sine squared theta and of course we have that all under that radical. All right, now this in actually simplifies quite well because sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay, that kind of goes back to those original equations we started with the section ago. So this part right here is rather than being equal to 1 is equal to 4. If you factored the 4 out. Right, so this is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi square root of 8 plus 8 cosine theta d theta. Alright, factoring a 2 out, actually no, let's do some trigonometry on the side here. We know of a way to relate square roots or squares with single powers, okay, an exponent of 1 with our cosine and sine, so let's go ahead and take this formula right here. Cosine squared theta is 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2 theta. 2 theta. All right. Well, if we rearrange this, actually, let's multiply both sides by 16. 
on both sides of a 16, that would be 8 plus 8 cosine 2 theta. Huh, not quite what I want. So how I'm going to write this then is 16, 16 cosine squared theta over 2 equals 8 plus 8 cosine theta. And I'll just divide theta in half in both places. Now, these are not these are equivalent forms of the same equation, but really I'm just manipulating to see if I can get something that works. Okay, so these are in effect three different equations. Well, actually the first two are perfectly fine. Those two are equal. However, this one I've manipulated that just a sec just a little bit. I'd probably need a change of variable really there. So what I can then go back over here and do is this is equal to 0 to 2 pi, the square root of 16 cosine squared theta over 2, which will be equal to 4, and this is the integral of 0 to 2 pi, of cosine of theta over 2. Okay, now that would be sine, okay, theta over 2 times 2, because we're dividing by 1 half there. Leave our 4 evaluated at 0 and 2 pi. Okay, oh, I need to make a note way back here that when I took the square root here, that really should have had absolute value bars there. Because cosine is um, an even function, okay, because it's an even function, we can actually just double from 0 to pi. So let's go ahead and change that real quick. I meant to make note of that. So this is actually going to be equal to the interval from 0 to pi, and we're going to double that. Okay. Cosine's even. All right, so then that actually should be an 8 out there. Changing that. All right, so evaluating that at 0 and at pi, that would actually be a 0 area because it's even an even function, but we actually want to know the total length. All right, evaluating that, we should get a value of 16, and that is our arc length. Okay, that brings us to the end of this section, 7.4, Area and Arc Length in Polar Coordinates.